Hey everybody, Ace Chenelium here. Back in Generation 6, Mega Evolution was all the rage. A lot of the hype leading up from X and Y into Auras, and from Auras into the first reveal trailers for Pokemon Sun and Moon, revolved around us speculating about which Pokemon we'd like to see be given the honour, or at least the upgrade, of having a Mega Evolved form introduced in the next games. Times have changed since then, and Pokemon Sun and Moon have long since passed with no new Mega Evolutions, although we were at least graced with the Mega Stones of all the previously introduced Mega Evolving Pokemon, so the gimmick isn't dead, it's just not getting any new additions anytime soon. What we received instead for a somewhat limited selection of Pokemon was the introduction of signature Z moves, which ultimately seemed to be this generation's answer to Mega Evolution. Unlike Mega Evolution, which allowed certain Pokemon holding a corresponding Mega Stone to Mega Evolve into a more powerful form of themselves for the duration of their time in battle, with only one Pokemon per team being allowed to use this feature of course, basic Z moves are available to all Pokemon, doesn't matter which species of Pokemon it is, as long as it has a move of the corresponding type of the Z-Stone it's holding, it can use that move. For example, even a weak Pokemon like Hoppip can use the move Bloom Doom as long as it has a grass-type attacking move such as Seed Bomb or Giga Drain. The exceptions, however, come with certain Z-Crystals that can only be used by certain Pokemon. For example, Decidium Z, Incineum Z, and Primarium Z can only be used by Decidui, Incineroar, and Primarina respectively. These crystals allow those Pokemon to showcase a signature Z-move that only those specific Pokemon can use. As of Pokemon Sun and Moon's release, only Pikachu, Raichu, Snorlax, Eevee, the Alolan starters and the Alolan Island deities have access to their own signature Z moves. Although as of the time of recording this video, we've also seen signature Z moves revealed for Komoo and Lycanroc in the run-up to Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon. This of course has got me thinking about the new games and what additions we might see to the catalogue of signature Z moves, so today I'm bringing you a list that a bunch of you have asked for, which is my top 10 Pokemon I would like to see be given a signature Z move in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Number 10. This first one will come as a surprise to nobody because we've already seen footage of what appears to be a Mimikyu Z move in the original trailer for Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. The reason I believe this is because obviously in that same trailer we saw a clip of what we now know is Lycanroc's Z move. In terms of the move, I'd make it a ghost type move and I'd give it some really cheesy name like Undercover Annihilator. Oh and just FYI, all of the Z moves on this list are going to have really cringy, cheesy names because that seems to be the theme with all the current Z moves we've got. I'm taking a little bit of inspiration from the images we saw in the original trailer for Pokemon Sun and Moon, but I'd have this Z move as Mimikyu jumping up into the air, arms coming out from under the cloth, which grab the opponent, raise it up into the air and thwam it down right into the ground. I think that would be an awesome sight to behold and would make Mimikyu a little bit more terrifying to look at because we get to see the eyes as well underneath. And to me, the idea of a Mimikyu specific Z move finally will make Mimikyu a little bit more unpredictable in battle. Number 9 we know Volcarona is going to be an Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon because we've seen it in the reveal trailers, and it's about time this firebug got a little bit more love. Ever since its introduction in Generation 5, this Tiger Lily come moth has been known for two things, Quiver Dance and Fiery Dance. Big whoop. A signature Z-move might be just the thing to spice this thing up. I could see Volcarona swoop around the opponent, lacing it with a fine powder as it goes round and round and round, then trailing off back to its original battle position, leaving a little trail of this powder, then jetting out a burst of fire that lights the powder, and once the burning powder reaches the opponent, it explodes in a massive blaze that engulfs the entire opponent for massive damage. Obviously, this would be a fire type move, and I'd probably give it a cringy name like Cataclysmic Creeper. Oh, I think I just cringed too hard. Number 8. For some reason, Raichu is the only Alolan form of a Kanto Pokemon that was given its own signature Z move, and I think that needs to change. And I think a perfect candidate for a Alolan form with a signature Z move is our good friend Muk. Arguably one of the more popular Alolan forms, Muk's bulk combined with its lone weakness to ground has made it a very useful Pokemon for a lot of different people. But I do think a signature Z move would just be the one last thing that Muk really needs to shine. This poison type Z move would be called Pollutant Plunge and would see Muk jump into the air but then dive back into the ground, kind of hands first, and kind of melt into a pool of ooze that would then disappear. The camera would then focus over the opponent who would have this yellow, green, and purple bubbling puddle forming underneath them, which we then realize turns out to be Muk itself as the opponent sinks into this ooze. And you could probably have it like poisoning the opponent or maybe giving the opponent a burn if we want to treat it kind of like boiling acid maybe. 
I don't know. Either way, this Z-Move concoction is a recipe for disaster. For the opponents, Mock will be fine. Number seven. Here's another Pokemon that's all but confirmed to have a signature Z-Move in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. I mean, again, we saw the animation for it in the original trailer for Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon where we saw Lycan Rock, so it seems really possible. Although I do sometimes hate bringing this stuff up because when it is confirmed to be a Z-Move for Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, we're gonna get people in the comments on this video like, that's already been confirmed to be a Z-Move. Or when it's later revealed that that wasn't a Z-Move animation and it's actually a totem Pokemon animation, we're gonna get people in the comments like, ugh, you're so wrong. It's actually a totem Pokemon animation, didn't you know? And then I have to reply to a thousand comments with the same thing, which is CHECK THE UPLOAD DATE BEFORE YOU COMMENT, MORON! Anyway, when it comes to Togedemaru, I feel like we have too many electric type Z-moves already. What with us having Gigavolt Havoc, Raichu Z-move, Pikachu 6000 Z-moves. So I think the spiky death ball should definitely have a steel type Z-move. I'd have the animation see Togedemaru run circles around the opponent until it whips up a kind of, kind of hurricane thing that sucks up the opponent. Then Togedemaru would fire thousands of steel tiny needles out of its body. That would go into the kind of vortex as well. Then when the vortex disappears, kind of peters out, all those needles would then be attracted into the opponent, almost like the opponent was holding a really powerful magnet. And of course, that's where the damage would come from. I know what you're thinking. Liam, what cringy name are you going to give this one? Sinister Spiky Cyclone. Yeah, they keep getting worse. Number six. Porygon Z is often overlooked in favor of its younger, more stable cousin, Porygon 2, given that Porygon Z is pretty fragile in comparison. But with the original Porygon being a gift Pokemon in Sun and Moon, I feel like not having a Z move for the Pokemon who is literally called Porygon Z is a completely wasted opportunity. Now, I wouldn't make this an attacking move. In fact, I'd make it exactly the same as Extreme Evo Boost. I don't really know what I'd do with the animation, but it's more about the stat boost. Every stat would be boosted two stages, and if you've used Porygon Z, you know how scary that would be. That way, unlike with Extreme Evo Boost, we'll have a status boosting Z move that actually is worth using and that is used by a Pokemon that can actually survive long enough to wreak some havoc and what havoc it'll wreak and of course keeping to porygon z's theme of corrupted software we'd call it cyberspace software scramble number five now personally i'm not the biggest fan of zorog like it just doesn't really interest me. But I realize that in saying that, I'm the minority because a huge majority of the fan base love this Pokemon. Therefore, it seems only logical to me that this Pokemon that wasn't really given any kind of upgrade in Generation 6 finally gets given its dues and gets a signature Z-move in Generation 7. This dark type Z-move known as Sneaky Shadow Salvo would involve the camera looking at the opponent with a blurred image of Zorok flying past the screen and then flying behind the opponent and then back and Front once again, and then Zorok just comes up behind the opponent and fires out a huge array of kind of Dark Pulse style blobs that hit the opponent and just send it absolutely flying into oblivion. And in my opinion, that's the kind of boost that Zorok needs just to make it a little bit more interesting, to be honest. Number four. Chandelure is my favorite ghost type Pokemon, especially to use in battle. It has fantastic speed, fantastic special attack, but much like the candle lit chandelier that it's based on, it's really easily extinguished. So I feel like if it's gonna be knocked out easily, a signature Z move is just what Chandelure needs to go out with a bang. Chandelure's signature fire type Z move, which we'll call Midnight Firestorm, would see the sky turn completely black with Chandelure floating up into the position that an actual chandelier would be as it begins to spin. And while it's spinning, it fires out little bursts of flame all the way around, which rain down on the opponent. Once the opponent's completely engulfed in flame, Flames, the whole thing explodes in a huge purple flame, the kind of flame color that Chandelure has in its normal form. But in fact, one thing they could introduce, because it's a signature Z move, is maybe the flame colors of the raining flames and the huge giant flame at the end are swapped round if you're using a shiny Chandelure. Dude, that'd be awesome. Number three. The first pre-Gen 7 Pokemon that wasn't available without trading in Pokemon Sun and Moon that has been revealed to be catchable in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon is Tropius. To me, this is fantastic because this exotic fruit monster suits the Alola region perfectly. And while it's here, 
it might as well pick up a Z-move of its own. For Tropius, the Z-move's gonna have to be a grass type, and I think the cringy name that suits it best, Tropical Tornado. This one would be really simple, with Tropius flapping its huge, massive wings to kick up loads of grass type debris, like leaves and sticks and stuff, and then flying circles around the opponent, making this huge tornado full of foliage and bushes and trees and things like that. This huge tornado would fly across the battlefield at the opponent, suck the opponent up and fire it out the top of the tornado. And then when the opponent finally lands back down, it explodes in a huge burst of energy. Yeah, that should make up for the four times ice weakness. Number two. This list wouldn't be worth posting if we didn't include the obligatory It should have a Mega. Why doesn't it have a Mega? This Pokemon's a perfect candidate for a Mega and it never got one! And by this we mean Flygon. Flygon deserves something for being such a fan favourite, and I think a signature Z-move is the way to go. I'd make it Z-move ground type, and I'd have Flygon burrowing into the ground, digging through, maybe past the Earth's core, I don't know if that's a bit too on the nose, but it would go all the way under, back up, and then fly out at breakneck speed from the ground, bursting through with rocks and sand going everywhere, and throwing both opponents just hellishly high into the air. And of course, once they hit the ground, they take massive damage. Having a signature Z-move is something Flygon really does deserve, so come on, Game Freak, give it something. Oh, and its name? Subterranean Terror. Number one. And last, but by no means least, although it's the top of a top 10 list, so I guess it's the most deserving? Yeah. Anyway, my number one pick for a Pokemon that should be given a signature Z-move in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon is... Dragonite. This adorable dragon looks amazing in any Z-move animation. Just try it out. So having a Z-move all of its own would look incredible. I'd argue this one has to be a dragon type Z-move, and I think it would see Dragonite firing out a whole bunch of Draco Meteor style meteors at the opponent before flying up outside the atmosphere grabbing on to like a meteor, giant huge comet or something, dragging it into the atmosphere, and as it flies down past the opponent, flinging the comet at the opponents. That'd be so, so cool. As for the name, I couldn't really think of one. So that's where you come in. Leave me a comment in the comment section below telling me what you think the name of this Z-move that I just explained for Dragonite should be called. And while you're there, let me know which Pokemon you think should get a signature Z-move in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Make sure you follow me on Twitter so that you always know where my live streams are happening because everything goes on my Twitter. And consider joining my Patreon so that you can see my videos before anyone else and so you can get your name in the credits of all of my videos. I mean, it costs a dollar a month, which is less than the price of cheese. If you did enjoy the video, hit the subscribe button and click that little bell so that you never miss one of my uploads and until next time I'm Ace Trainer Liam keep on training